Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. I was just over at a press conference here in Wilmington, North Carolina, where some of the local and state officials uh, spoke with the press regarding uh, the concerns of Gen X, which is a fairly toxic chemical that has been found in the water here. Uh, Cape Fear uh, River uh, is the main water body, goes about tw uh, 200 miles, I believe, wrapping around Wilmington. Uh, I could bullshit you and try to explain chemicals and compounds. I ain't gonna do that. So I found an expert, uh, Dr. Larry uh, Cahoon, and uh, we're at University of uh, North Carolina, Wilmington, where you're a professor teaching uh, biology and marine marine biology. So uh, for those of you who don't know this story, basically uh, DuPont, which is not exactly a gold star company, it's a chemical company, it's had many, many class action lawsuits against it. Uh, it has been linked to people getting sick in West Virginia, the Ohio Valley River, as well as other places. DuPont uh, spun off into a, a separate company called Chemrol, I believe. Chemrol. Chem Hours, excuse me, Chem Hours uh, here in the area, and Chem Hours has been basically um, producing a chemical called Gen X. Uh, it's t basically they use uh, water in their creation of products uh, that go for use for tef Teflon, basically, and then they dump a lot of that treated water back in uh, the Cape Fear water. However, uh, a lot of the Gen X, which again is a pretty toxic chemical has been found in the water. Gen X was a new compound that DuPont switched from a previously toxic chemical called C8. So C8, uh, the EPA uh, had issues with C8, and then they switched to a um, Gen X. So first tell me what I got wrong, and then explain to the layman uh, why them saying, because the city so far as well as the state have said, there's a low risk. Even though there's Gen X in the water, there's a low risk. Yeah, I, I'm not buying the low risk assessment at this point. Uh, part of that is that um, Gen X has not been that thoroughly tested. The EPA does, uh, in some of the documents I've seen, consider it to be a potential human health risk. Uh, how much of a risk, especially for long-term issues like cancer, uh, we don't really know very well. It's not that thoroughly tested because, as you said, it's a relatively new compound. They only got permission to produce it from EPA in 2009. And permission to produce is based on, well, it won't kill you outright. It's not too dangerous to produce. Um, EPA's guidance at that time said don't put it in the water either uh, because we strongly suspect that it's also got human health risks attached to it even if they're not very well understood. Its chemical structure is similar enough to other compounds that we would be concerned about that. Um, Gen X has been tested to a small degree since then. Uh, I've seen some data from acute toxicity. In other words, does it kill you or does it kill a test organism quickly? Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not going to go into the dosages and responses and all of that, but the long-term effects tests are rare. Uh, there's not been very much of that done. It's difficult and it takes a long time. The thorough testing of new compounds that we try to undertake can take decades. And so we're producing compounds in many cases that aren't adequately tested in terms of human health threats until after we've released them and started producing them. Uh, the previous compound, the one you mentioned, they call it C8, um, was found to be a human carcinogen. And they got into trouble, as you said, uh, up in West Virginia, producing that stuff, letting it loose into the Ohio River. For, for those like me who failed science, what is a human carcinogen? Uh, a human carcinogen is a compound that will cause cancer in humans. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, and don't hesitate to ask about those terms. Um, so, you know, DuPont was sued over that. Uh, EPA came down with them. Uh, and find them for mm, some problems with the way they handled it. I don't know the specifics, but uh, so they phased out the production of that stuff. Uh, they came up with Gen X as a replacement for it. Um, it's used as a precursor in the synthesis of Teflon and other similar compounds. You know, we use Teflon for a lot of things. It's great stuff. But some of these compounds are quite 
likely very dangerous, and some all of them are potentially dangerous. There's a bunch of compounds out there we don't know a lot about. And how, in terms of compounds, the C8 was uh, tested in animals. Yep. They found uh, cancers, they found liver disease, they found uh, autoimmune. They also found, in terms of reproduction, uh, female rats were having pre pre premature birth, as well as um, yeah. very low weight. So how different is C8 from Gen X, which it became? We don't know completely. Um, I am informed by our ecotoxicologist that Gen X is an endocrine disruptor. That means it's a chemical that can interfere with hormone function in your body. And that's generally not a good thing. Um, it's also apparently uh, got immune system issues that can interfere with proper function of your immune system. Again, that's not good. Uh, we do know from studies that have been already done that it can bioaccumulate, meaning it can build up in your body. Um, in that regard, Gen X may not be as bad as C8. C8 had a half time in the human body or a lifetime of several years. So it would stay in your body that long. Gen X apparently doesn't stay as long as that. But in looking at the data today, I... I did see a definitive set of numbers on that. So less dangerous in that sense, but still it bioaccumulates, meaning every time you drink a glass of water with that stuff in there, you're adding to the content of your body in terms of that stuff. And you're excreting some, but you're building it up. So, you know, we're retaining the stuff in our bodies, which can't be good. So the exposure is essentially constant. It's always with you. Um, Gen X is not the only compound. Yeah. I, w I want to get to that, but two more questions. So for the layman, common sense, I asked them at the press conference, they had like a deer in the headlight look. Yeah. So the, the, the company actually had to file 16 separate violation or notices, excuse me, with the EPA, basically acknowledging, yes, there are, there's a possibility based on tech the chemicals uh, harm to humans or the environment, 16 times, which uh, The Intercept reported. So why would the, I know you said the EPA said, don't put in the drinking water. Well, is anyone monitoring whether they are doing that? Because clearly they've been doing this for years here. Secondly, uh, how is it that the city and the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality came to the low risk assessment if number one, it's not regulated, Number two, there's really no standards. Like for lead, we know 15 parts per billion. Right, right. Uh, so two questions there. Um, uh, do they monitor the output of this stuff? I don't know. Um, we're trying to find out what their discharge permit actually allows them to discharge. Uh, their discharge is very large, I do know that. It, it's a very large volume of water. Averages about 30 plus million gallons per day. Now that's from the entire facility. Uh, it's not clear where or how this stuff is getting into their effluent. Um, they are not volunteering that information. Um, I don't know what percentage of their production of this stuff is being discharged that way. Um, I don't think anyone knows that except maybe the company and they're not forthcoming. Wait a minute, you mean a chemical company is not forthcoming with their data or information? You don't say. Uh, that's apparently the case here. Okay. Um, I confess I would be surprised if they put all that out on the table for us. Um, uh, you know, I think they were a little surprised to find themselves in this situation. But given the history of these compounds and these companies, and Chemoir spun off of DuPont, I think in 2015. Uh, so they have a long history of dealing with these issues and they, they ought to know pretty well what they're up against here. Uh, I'm a little surprised that they're allowing this to happen. I'm a lot surprised. A chemoir. Yeah, yeah. Um, so moving on, your, your second question. Um, run that at me again. I was saying, yeah. how does the state oh, environmental yeah, departments? Low, low risk, right. Yeah, the question about low risk. I, I have to question that assessment given that the amount of testing done on this compound alone 
hasn't been all that thorough and that we know that the other compounds were suspected human carcinogens and all of that and that they've only looked at that aspect of the threat as far as the public is aware. Uh, I think the toxicity testing has looked at a variety of things but it's not been as thorough as it should be. Um, and given that Gen X is not the only compound in the water that they're putting there, I don't see how you can support an assessment of a low risk to public health based on all that incompleteness of the information we have.